so in the last lecture what we have discussed is the out of four colligative properties two colligative properties which were the relative lowering relative lowering of vapor pressure okay and we discuss the elevation of boiling point elevation of boiling point now in this lecture we will learn that is the rest two colligative properties which are number 1 depression depression of freezing point number 1 and second is osmotic pressure these two colligative properties we will learn in this lecture okay. now moving on to the first one that is the depression of freezing point depression of freezing point now what does this mean that means it is a particular property which actually decreases means decreases let's say freezing point is what if i fundamentally think about freezing point is basically when you convert a solid a, a liquid to solid a liquid to solid so it freezes okay and nothing but the freezing point is basically the melting point you can say now in this case when we are doing that solid liquid to solid so what was the first qualitative property the relative lowering of vapor pressure this is applicable for all the cases all the uh, qualitative properties with all the qualitative properties that means in at a particular temperature let's see if i talk about this temperature this range or this temperature range the vapor pressure between the two states will decrease although here there is no point of tail at uh, taking the vapor pressure because it's a solid substance of the liquid substance but in principle in principle means if you compare if you don't say vapor pressure you can say pressure also okay so if you compare then what you will find out is that for the solvent the solvent if you plot the vapor pressure versus the temperature for the liquid solvent i'm talking about the liquid solvent but this liquid solvent okay, liquid solvent if you have this vapor pressure this is for the liquid solvent this is for the liquid solvent now when you add a solute substance okay when you add a solute substance okay this is sorry a solute when you add solute then what happens the solute is nature of the solute is what non non volatile non electrolyte okay so this vapor pressure decreases right of the solution of the solution the vapor pressure decreases that means if i think about at a particular temperature the at a particular temperature the vapor pressure decreases from the liquid the vapor pressure of the liquid solvent decreases in the solution now this means okay this means the lowering of vapor pressure but if i think in this way okay if i think in this way okay that this liquid solvent hmm, this liquid solvent has a tem here uh, okay mm, okay now in this case what will happen okay let's say if this point this point okay this point was the melting point of the solvent this is also melting point or the freezing point e f we are talking about okay now from here the state will change definitely the state will change right the state will change so here this will be the this change now this is basically the frozen solvent this is the frozen solvent okay 
this is a frozen solvent so this is the your melting point or you can say freezing point now you see the frozen solvent here the frozen solvent and the solution they have an intersection region they have an intersection region okay let's say i am this is this is tf0 now what this graph the significance of this plot is what this is the liquid solvent at the solvent at the liquid phase and this is the solvent as a sol uh, if you are frozen state okay now this is the intersection point at this particular temperature this is known as the freezing point or the melting point okay now this is the solution okay this is a line of the solution the position of the solution now then this frozen when i say freezing point that means i am comparing the solvent as sol solvent what happens the sol solvent was in the solid state okay in that case what i will mean i am just the graph i am just taking it back slide back beyond the, before the temperature now you will find now this solution now this now the solvent is in solution right if you extrapolate the solution the frozen solvent graph and the solution graph merges at one point that means it is expected that if this solution where no solute molecule was there only solvent molecule was there this was the graph this was the intersection is expected but in solution in case of the solution when the liquid solvent is is, is uh, mixed with the solute this point came here so basically this point is now here okay and that's why this is if you find it is a basically the decrease in the freezing point on the melting point and that's why this is known as the depression of the freezing point and the depression of the freezing point is delta tf is defined by tf0 minus tf okay acha now this delta tf if i think about this delta tf okay this delta tf is exactly this delta tf and delta and the previous one which is elevation of boiling point both is exactly same just boiling point is elevated and the melting point or freezing point is decreased okay so what i can say this delta tf is equal to some constant which let's say name i am naming kf into small m that is the molality molality of the solvent hmm. okay acha so this m we can write what in place of m w2 divided by m2 divided by w1 divided by 1000 in kilogram hmm? so this is the molality molality is what the number of moles of the solute per kg of the solvent okay now just same exactly like same like kb kg or kb elevation of boiling point depression is same exactly the same okay so what is the expression of kf then here what is the expression of kf kf is r multiplied by m okay m of the solvent multiplied by tf0 square divided by 1000 multiplied by delta h of fusion fusion is that was l delta h of boiling and fusion is the process the enthalpy required is to convert a liquid to solid or solid liquid okay now what will be the unit of kf if i think about what is the unit of r in si joule kelvin inverse mole inverse right multiplied by m m is basically your let's say i am talking about kilogram kilogram per mole right acha multiplied by d delta tf let me say the kelvin square and delta h fusion is basically joule okay joule per mole joule per mole okay so what will be the unit here kilogram right kelvin kelvin multiplied by mole mole exactly like your elevation this kb okay so this kf is known as freezing point depression constant or molal depression constant 
or it has a very beautiful name that is cryoscopic constant. Okay, cryoscopic constant is very beautiful. Cryoscopic constant. Okay, so what is the thing? So basically, the question people can ask is that what is the significance of this graph? Okay, so what you will say? This is very important concept. Otherwise, rest of things is the same like the elevation of boiling point. What is this? Let me tell you again the significance of this graph. This you have a liquid solvent, the solvent. Okay, liquid, and this is the frozen solvent. So this point will be the melting point of the pure solvent now the sol the, now the solvent is not pure because the solvent contains solid molecules okay now this is the line of the solution now this is x now this so now this solution the intersection of the line of the solution with the frozen solvent will give you the current will give you the current of the melting point of the solution okay now this is basically now delta now tf so what has changed? The melting point has changed, or freezing point has changed from Tf0 to Tf. That is, it is fixed. Okay? So this is the depression of freezing point, okay? and the Kb emerged with the constant Kf. This is nothing but cryoscopic constant. Acha. Okay. Now. The another uh, colligative properties that we will learn now is the last one that is osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure. Okay. Osmotic pressure. First question will arise is what is this? What is this? See, osmotic pressure is something where it comes from the word osmosis. Hmm. That means it always happens in our cell membrane. Okay. So let's say if you have a solution, cell membrane, if you have a solution, let's say, and these two, uh, one, if you have a one A and solution in one region, you have a solution. You have a solution okay and one region you have a solvent okay and they are connected by a semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane now what is this semi permeable membrane the semi permeable membrane let's say in this solution, you have a smaller, this is your the solvent molecule, okay, and you have a larger, this is the solute molecule, okay, you have a smaller solvent molecule and a larger solute molecule. Now, semi permeable membrane, what will allow? It will allow the smaller particle to pass one region to the another region, okay. So the solvent molecules will be here. Solvent molecules will be here. Okay, the solvent molecules and solute molecules are also here. So this is a solvent system and this is a solute solution. Okay. Now in this case, what will happen? It's a very interesting thing. Okay. The it's a very interesting. So what happens? Um, let me tell you. So short semi permeable membrane that it allows small particles to pass particles to pass but not the large ones large ones okay so this is the definition of a semi permeable membrane now what happens if you do this kind of experiment what will happen you will find out you will find out that this solvent molecule they go to the solution why because in solution the solvent molecules are in lower concentration number is low and in in, in sorry in, in solution and in solvent the solvent molecule is very high and always we know it goes from higher concentration concentration to the lower concentration okay that means what they they're doing that means through the semi permeable membrane 
the solvent molecules travel from solvent region to the solution region and increases the number of solvent molecules increases the number of solvent molecules okay so that the solvent so the solution gets diluted okay the solution gets diluted that means the solvent molecules is going from higher dense region to the lower dense region now somebody you will ask that this is a solution so this is a more dense here dense right but if i count the number of solvent molecules if i count the number of solvent molecules here the number of solvent molecules is less and here the number of solvent molecule is high so in that case the driving the direction of the movement of the molecules will be from higher higher number to the lower number and only this permeable membrane allows semi permeable membrane allows the sol solvent molecules to travel not the solute molecules okay now what is happening now if i think if i think the mechanism here okay what is that if then i will find it out let's say if you have this kind of system if you have this kind of system let's say okay now what will happen okay? and here you have a semi permeable membrane spm spm hmm. okay so here you have one way now here what you have in this case in this case you have the solution right in this case you have solution and in this case you have solvent now what will happen now here both they have a same atmospheric pressure so this is basically p atm and this is also p atm so atmospheric pressure at same atmospheric pressure now what will happen the solvent molecules will try to pump up try to come in the solution okay and due to that they will exert a pressure here they will exert a pressure in this membrane in this membrane right now if i want to stop this okay if i want to stop this let's say this pressure is denoted by pi pi now if i want to stop this movement what i have to do i have to add this pi here okay so that the total pressure coming from this side will be equal to the pressure coming from the this side right now since they are in a same at initially they were in a same atmospheric pressure range but the solvent molecules is traveling from this concentration to the this concentration and how, when they are tra uh, traveling they are exerting a pressure in this semi permeable membrane that means if i give this pressure and um, the amount of pressure here then this flow will be stopped okay and that amount of pressure is solely and solely exerted by the solution so this pressure is solely exerted by the solution exerted by the solution i'm telling again initially what happens initially they both were in a same atmospheric pressure okay so in that case the solvent was traveling from this region to this region okay now they were exerting a pressure in this semi permeable membrane and transferring to the membrane now if i give the same amount of pressure here above the solution side what will happen this flow will be stopped okay that means when i am exerting that pressure exerting that pressure that pressure is solely at particular atmospheric pressure that pressure pi is solely exerted by the solution okay and that's why this is this pressure is known as the osmotic pressure okay pi and this osmotic pressure is basically the pressure nothing but the pressure okay so since it is the pressure so here what we have okay so it thinks it's pressure so what we can write let's say this is i am denoting by pi not pi let's say i am denoting by uh p prime this is p prime p prime i'm denoting by so this p prime will be equal so it will assuming that solution behaves as a ideal gas so they can be write v is equal to n rt right or what we can write this p prime is is equal to n by v 
at t now what is this n by v is t so and this p prime what they denote is denote by pi so what is the molecular formula pi is equal to crt this is the equation okay so what you can say from here the osmotic pressure is basically proportional to the concentration of the solution concentration of the solution hmm. okay and now when i say concentration of the solution that means this concentration is coming from what this concentration is coming from the concentration of the solute so what we can write here let me write this part let me write this part okay so what we can write here pi is equal to what n2 by the this is n2 by v n2 is the solute number of solute by v v is the solution the volume of the solution okay multiplied by r into t is equal to n2 what we can write n2 is basically your w2 by m2 by v at t or m2 is basically pi multiplied by v okay m2 is equal to I'm sorry m2 is basically w2 rt divided by pi v so if you know the solution the if you know the uh, what is that the osmotic pressure exerted by the solution and the volume and rest of the things so if we you will able to calculate the molecular weight of the solute okay unknown if the your solute is unknown you can be able to calculate the molecular weight so this is also a particular technique particular technique to calculate the molecular weight of the your uh, molecular weight of the unknown solute okay now if the two solutions having osmotic pressure osmotic pressure you have two solutions okay so in that case what will happen the solution of the lower concentration or the lower osmotic pressure is known as the hypotonic solution okay with respect to more concentrated solution okay hypotonic and hypertonic it is more than then it is high, uh, uh, hypertonic and it is less than it is hypotonic this is very common term you will find out anywhere very easy okay but what is the more important co concept is here important concept is here is that whenever you ex this pressure this pressure is exerted by the solvent the solvent molecule this is exactly is the pressure exerted by the acha when i say the flow is going not going okay sometimes you might confuse that okay this pi is coming from here okay but when i say this is an equilibrium means there is no pressure is going that means the solution you have to put this excess amount of pressure in the solution to stop this flow right now this pressure is basically now this pressure is equal to the pressure exerted by the solvent and now this pressure is included in the solution okay so in reversely you can say the solution is exerting the pressure so osmotic pressure is a pressure of the solution the osmotic pressure is the pressure of the solution okay that is the excess this excess must be applied to stop the flow okay so osmotic pressure this is the pressure exerted by the solution to stop this flow okay so when i say this is when flowing is stopped that means this pressure and this pressure both are same this pressure and this pressure both are same but the excess pressure what you applied that is the pressure exerted by the solvent but that pressure you have now applied here now you stop the flow so that means indirectly you what you can say this pi this osmotic pressure is coming from the solvent to stop the flow so osmotic pressure is the excess pressure applied to the solution to stop the flow okay so this all the two here yeah, uh, osmotic pressure and the depression of freezing point and the next lecture what i will discuss is the santo factor and the rest things and that will be the last one of this liquid uh, this solution chapter